is good to be in San Diego. It's a lovely day and uh, an even better evening. Temperature in the low 70s as the Rockies and Padres gather for game two of this three game set. The Rockies have struggled against San Diego this year, just two and five. And here at Petco Park, they have struggled to score. They have six runs in four games at Petco Park. Charlie Blackman will try to initiate a change as he steps in to face hard throwing Andrew Kashner. And we are underway. First pitch on the outside corner at 92 for a strike. Charlie has reached in 29 consecutive games. And that's a strike also. A slider, a cutter at 88. And the fastball called strike three. You gotta be kidding me. That looked up. I guess not. It's in the Subaru strike zone. So Charlie never moves the bat. He's gone on three pitches. Let's take a look at the Rockies lineup presented by Southwest Airlines. A couple of minor changes in that lineup. DJ will bat second, Nolan third, Cargo's back in there. Trevor Story's going to hit in a coveted five spot. And then Para, Reynolds, Nick Hundley, Chad Bettis is all trying to vary things a little bit and ignite his offense. They were shut out for just the second time last night, Spilly, as DJ takes ball one. Well, you'd like to see the offense strike first against Andrew Kashner and this Padres team. Three pitches to deep to Charlie and that was it. You know, I always pay attention to starts and varying starts and for Andrew Kashner his last start that he had. He used his sinker 45 percent of the time. He's never used a sinker that much ended up going six in the third against Seattle. Kashner is one of those guys that has never won in a big way in the ERA is 479 but it's it's somewhat surprising because he has great stuff and he's got a big time arm it's a big time arm and when the Cubs got him in the first round for a couple of years ago they thought he was going to be a closer 94 mile an hour fastball good slider great changeup and he wanted to be a starter so he he became a starter and throughout the minor leagues he was good and I think you see the upside with what he has a couple of years ago I thought he had potential to be a top of the front top of the line starter in the major leagues yeah it looked like he was going to be a front line starter here's a ground ball to short and Ramirez has it two outs yeah, he went 10 and 9 in 2013 Made 26 starts for the Padres that year, had a 3.09 ERA. But since that time, he's battled some injuries. And part of it is he never gets a lot of run support. More on that in a moment. Here's the defense for the Padres. See the grouping in the outfield. Brett Wallace getting a start at third base. He's not a real mobile defender. The Rockies perhaps bun at some point tonight with him at third. Solarte was at third last night. He's at second. This evening. Here's Nolan with two outs and nothing going on. That fastball high and away. But Kashner, for instance, in his career, Kashner has a sub three ERA at Petco Park, but he also has a sub 500 record here. Well, and that sub three ERA is fourth best in San Diego Padres history. Got names like Trevor Hoffman ahead of him. I mean, look at that. He's 17 and 19, but 279. Not a guy who. Toes the rubber wouldn't raise his hand and say, I'll take that. Yeah, that would surprise you to see those numbers and be two games under 500. And that's also why at times you look at the, the wins and you think, you know what, that's kind of an overrated stat. I want to see how the team does. The team needs a win behind a guy, but you know what, he's pitching well enough for his team to be able to win. I think it's become more overrated also in this era because pitchers typically don't go much beyond, even when things are going well, much beyond the sixth inning. So you have less opportunity in games that are decided in the final third to produce a decision. So a four pitch walk to Nolan that will allow cargo to hit here. In the last 10 games there are few guys in the sport hotter than cargo 455 average and when cargo gets hot 
He doesn't just get base hits. He hits the ball over the wall six times in the last ten ball games. So Cargo step in against Kashner. He did not play last night against Drew Pomerantz. Fastball outside five straight out of the zone. Cargo, you want to talk about consistency, Spilly? He's hitting 307 at home. He's hitting 305 out on the road. Those are good numbers I like to see. And if you want to talk about consistency, Andrew Kashner, nine starts. He's given up a run in each start in the first inning. Well, speaking of first innings, the Rockies have to find a way. If nothing else, get a push in the first inning. They have been climbing uphill very frequently lately. First inning, they've allowed runs in seven of their last 11 ball games. Two balls and a strike. The cargo, even here at Petco, put on a show during batting practice. sitting during batting practice watching from above today I just want to get a look at the guys swings from above see the mechanics and I was looking down as I was filling out my book I go man that's loud and look up and it's cargo it's just he makes a different sound it's a different sound off the wood of his back and that's not a cliche it really truly is for, for some guys with that the big time power it does sound different and now Kashner has walked two in a row with two outs and that'll bring up Trevor Story. He's 23 year old shortstop. Kashner goes through periods where he sprays his fastball. Well, he has trouble commanding the fastball and if he can't command the fastball it leads to walks and walks lead to runs. Yeah, make him pay with two outs. And you're right about the first ball fastball strike percentages this year he's down to 62 percent of the time he's able to throw a strike with the fastball. His drop from 2014 when he was throwing it 71% of the time. Gets that pitch in there, Trevor. Story had one of the Rockies' two hits last night. That's right, Colorado had two hits. In being shut out 40 nothing one of the hits Nolan's was a little dribbler up the third base line. Only the Reds have walked more hitters than the Padres this year. He never would have said that in years past. No. Cash was walking. Cashler's walking nearly four batters per nine, which is his career high. Two in the first inning already. You look at see that little guy in the screen? He was starting to fall asleep already. No way. Two and one on story. And a big bouncer to short. That'll end the inning. So the Rockies had a couple of base runners, nothing else. And we'll see Chad Bettis go to the Petco mound when we return to San Diego.
John Jay, who had 10 hits in his previous three ball games. He had a five hit game a couple days ago against Seattle. Here's the Southwest batting order for Andy Green tonight. Will Myers will bat second. Matt Kemp hit the three run bomb in the first inning yesterday. Solarte will bat cleanup. Upton, Brett Wallace, Derek Norris, Alexi Ramirez, and Andrew Kashner. Melvin Upton with a straight steal of home last night. See that frequently. So Chad Bettis, and he has the first pitch in there, and it's grounded by John Jay to first. He never even let go of the bat. He took about four strides, and there's one out. Chad's record four and four, but the ERA because of the last two outings is inflated to 546. What have you noticed, Billy? You know what I've noticed that his pace. We love the pace in between pitches, but when I start watching him from the side, his last start. Mechanically, he looked like he was rushing through his mechanics. So what happens when you're rushing through the mechanics, you don't get your whole body in, in the correct position. His front shoulder was coming out early. The arm was leaking. He just wasn't very aggressive with the fastball because the mechanics weren't allowing him to put the ball where he wanted. So watch him slow down a little bit tonight. That's a great pitch. 93 on the paint of the outside corner. You live there, you won't get hurt typically. Will Myers at a 92 mile an hour sinker just nicked it. It's 0 2. Well, just like hitting, your body has a natural rhythm, a natural timing. When that timing gets thrown off, the smallest change doesn't allow you to finish certain pitches off. It doesn't allow you to finish your swing. Here we was talking about mistakes. Sometimes mistakes get hit a long way. Sometimes pitches are good pitches and they get hit a long way. That was a mistake he got away from. He got away with. That was that was a center cut slider. It was supposed to be taken off the plate. Hundley sets up off the plate now. That's the slider he was looking for in the previous 0-2 pitch. Didn't induce a swing. It's one and two on Myers. Chad in his last outing against Cincinnati, three and two thirds, six runs, eight hits. And he had the tough outing in Boston. Myers has battled wrist injuries throughout his career. He's been healthy this year. Put up solid numbers, 270, 827 coming in. One out, nobody on. He tried to go up and in with a fastball. That misses two and two. There's Big Matt Kemp on deck. And the slider's in. Now it's three and two. Well, the Padres had the, as a team this year against right-handed pitching are hitting 225. That's last in Major League Baseball. This ball's clubbed to deep left center field, and it is gone. So once again, the Rockies give up a first-inning run. Will Myers with his ninth of the year. Bettis had Will Myers on the ropes one and two and couldn't find a way to finish him off and with the slider almost hitting him 2 2 he had to come with the fastball and that fastball leaked right back over the middle Myers puts his good swing on it. Bettis has had trouble of late in particular with giving up the home run he's now allowed a team high 10 home runs. Ball and a strike on Kemp, who hit the longest home run, or tied for the longest home run in the history of Petco Park last night. It's against Chris Russell, who's only given up a couple of home runs all year. He hit it 458 feet. Adrian Gonzalez 
some years ago hit one 458. Russ and Ashley uh, after that first inning pitched very very well. He's very good. And Kemp knows it. He didn't even wait for home plate umpire Jordan Baker. He just walked off. Two outs. Haven't looked at the Rockies defense yet. A defense that is really good but has not been playing really well. Gerardo Parra. Charlie Blackman, Cargo in the outfield. Arenado Story, LeMahieu, Reynolds in the infield. Nick Hundley, second game back off the disabled list. Once again, doing the catching against his former club. The Rockies have made errors in seven of their last eight ball games as Solarte takes a strike. When teams are playing well, there's a crispness to how they play. And the Rockies have lacked that. You saw it last night, first inning. Double play ball and Chris Russin who's a very good athlete fired the ball in the center field and then the next pitch Kemp hit out and now you're behind by three even if Kemp goes deep as we discussed last night Billy okay so it's a one nothing game and that's what happened tonight solo home run but when you create traffic when you don't play clean baseball more often than not you're going to get beat you're going to get beat because giving more opportunities to another for another team when it feels like you're giving extra outs. Rockies went 11 games at one point this year without producing an error. And in the last 19 games, they have 16 errors. So they've dropped off in the last uh, few weeks. Two two and a good slider with depth actually that was more of a curveball so Betis strikes out Solarte but he gives up a home run to Will Myers one nothing San Diego. Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Bank of the West. For a personal approach to banking, go West Bank of the West. By your hometown Toyota stores, Toyota, let's go places. And by Southwest Airlines, transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Well, the Rockies are already down a run. They've given up a first inning run in eight of their last 12 contests. So they're playing uphill a little bit uh, again tonight as Para. Will lead it off in the second against Kashner, and he lays down a bunt. Talked about the fact that the Rockies may take advantage of Brett Wallace at third. And he might try it again. Well, you talk about giving up a first inning run, and you wouldn't think it's a big deal, but when you look at the Rockies' overall record this season, they are 8 and 23 when scored upon first. It's a big deal. It's a big deal.
inside one ball one strike Rockies had two runners on with two outs in the first inning back to back walks to Arenado and Gonzalez Trevor Story bounced into a force out Rockies now slipped under 500 on the road 14 and 15 and he shortened up as if to yeah, again. again and I think that was a legitimate if the ball been in the strike zone Parr was going to try to lay down a bunt there was no bluffing there he just pulled it back and I like that in that I feel like tell me if you concur the last few weeks the Rockies have gotten back into that mode of, of waiting to hit one over the fence as opposed to for for a decent period of time they were taking what the game gave them moving runners over quote unquote playing much better small ball. Wow, the first game of the season against Zach Greinke, the at-bats from top to bottom, I mean, that stood out in my mind. I go, if this is the type of baseball and the type of bats that we're going to see all year, it's going to be a lot of success for the Rockies. Slider chop, chop foul by Para. It's not that we're, we're seeing empty at-bats. It's just... There's a difference when you're taking a, a good quality at bat. It just shows that you're you're looking for a pitch and you're holding out until you get that pitch. And whether it's middle middle or you're looking up in the zone for a fastball, you have an approach and you stick with it. Another ground ball induced by Kashner. Will Myers runs to the bag. One out. Mark Reynolds coming up. Fans, when the Rockies score seven runs in a game, go to participate in Colorado Taco Bell locations the following day between four and six to receive your Rockies Taco Special. Live Moss at Taco Bell. Look across the bay. Coronado. A few hours from. Ryan Spielberg's home in Santa Barbara. <laughs> it's about three hours, three and a half hours. Pretty drive. It's a great drive. That is nice. Maybe next time uh, you'll rent a yacht and we can cruise up there for the afternoon. Next time, I, no, I, I rented a yacht. I oh, just forgot did? to invite you. Oh, again? 0 oh, and 2 on Reynolds. Well, it's like emoji night, isn't it, at the it, ballpark it's tonight? It's bit, bit emoji night. I don't know what that means. But that's Mark Reynolds' scoreboard picture. <laughs> what is that? Line drive to right, a base hit. Kemp trying to chase it down and hold Reynolds to a single. Here goes Mark in a second. And he's got himself a double. Good base running by Reynolds. Rockies have their first hit and a runner in scoring position with one gone in the second. Well, he's going to love that bit emoji if he's going to be hitting the baseball like that. He's wearing a dress with pearl necklace and that champagne shooting all over the place. I love Mark Reynolds swing right there. Inside out, balls inside, keeps his hands in and not trying to do too much, but knowing that Matt Kemp's down there, that's a tough run for him to pick up spin around and throw him out take that extra base big at bat here for Nick Hundley hitting in that eighth spot and it's a sharp ground ball base hit and Reynolds around third here's Kemp's throw to the plate and he stops and heads back and Kemp made a good throw a few feet up the line but ball was probably hit too hard on that slick infield for Reynolds to score so it's first and third with one out. Well Hunley having played in San Diego for so many years knows the importance of being able to hit the ball opposite field and Stu Cole was was waving Mark Reynolds home the entire time but he was paying attention to the throw. So he stopped them late and that's how you put the brakes on. Good read by Stu Cole and good job of putting the brakes on by Mark Reynolds. It's a great job because you save a chance at injury. When you, we, we've seen the, so many guys with hamstring pulls right now. Puig, when the Rockies go to LA, he's not available. This is fouled off. 
with a hamstring injury. Hunter Pence is going to be out a couple of months. He looks like he's going to have surgery on his hamstring. He tried to come back a little bit early when the Giants were in Denver. A lot of hamstring injuries, back of the leg injuries. When you talk to trainers, it happens when you're decelerating quickly. So the fact that he slid, it's actually a safer way to stop and a more efficient way to stop. Most guys don't do it, but the guys that do it understand why they're why they're stopping like that, and it's for that reason. That just keeps popping them up. The Norris can't find it. So as we show you again, Mark Reynolds is running. He's keeping his eye on Stu Cole, and as soon as he put the brakes, because he was being waved the whole time, that's a natural baseball movement for Mark, a slide. Kids know how to do it. You slide into the bases. It's the easiest way to stop and change directions on a baseball field when you're running full speed. One of my favorite drills to watch was when you guys would get the mats out in spring training and have sliding practice. <laughs> That's caught. Well, if Will Myers lets if that he drop, lets it drop, it's going to be a double play. And innings so over. That was exactly what I was thinking. And yeah, you know, he was he was eyeballing Reynolds at third, but because of the angle of the pitch, Bettis never got out of the box. If he watch this, Bettis is not. He's got he's got to run now, and he did. If he lets that drop. Because naturally, at first, Huntley's got to work back to the bag. It's going to be a, a double play by 50 feet. So we'll look at that and we'll say that's an extra out that the Padres have given the Rockies. See if Charlie Blackman could take advantage. Did not swing the bat his first time up. Three fastballs. And he was gone. It's a hard slider down and in. There's Charlie Blackman's bit emoji. Could be one of my favorites so far. The struggle is real. Why is his eyes closed? I'm not sure. And their creative department. <laughs> I wonder how long they've been working on this. A couple minutes. Two and nothing on Charlie. Who has 25 RBIs out of the top spot in the lineup despite being on the disabled list with a toe injury earlier this year. That's the third best mark of all leadoff guys in the National League in terms of RBIs. And 3-0. I mentioned at the start, Andrew Kashner has been throwing his two seam fastball a lot more. His last start, he threw it over 45% of the time. Tonight, I've been watching, he's throwing it again. He's trying to throw it, but he's not able to command it. We expect to see the four seam back. That's the one with a little bit more velocity. And that one had 96 miles an hour of velocity. Three balls and a strike. Reynolds at third, he doubled. A single by Hunley. He's at first, there are two outs. Rockies down one nothing. Top of two. This ball is roped toward the gap, and it's going to get down and run to the wall. Hunley may have a chance to score. He'll get a green light from Stu Cole. And Charlie Blackman with a two-run double, and the Rockies are up a run. And he's now reached at 30 straight. How about that, Chuck Nasty? Oh, yeah, the struggle's real. Good job hitting a good fastball. 3-1 count. You know it's coming. Kashner's struggling with fastball command. You see on the Subaru Super Mo, that is a nice, easy swing. We talk about getting your foot down early. Just drops the barrel and smacks it right into the right center gap. It's just what the Rockies needed. Two outs. Get those runs in. DJ takes a strike. So Charlie becomes the 17th Rocky to reach in 30 consecutive games. The only other leadoff hitter for the Rockies to have a stretch where they reached in at least 30 is in the ballpark tonight. In fact, he's in the ballpark every night when the Rockies play. 
First base coach Eric Young twice had 30 plus game. Periods where he reached. Last Rocky to reach in 30 straight. Michael Kadire set the club record 46 in a row. Two balls and a strike on LeMahieu. 319 career hitter against the San Diego Padres. The Rockies shut out last night. They're up two to one here in the second. And on two hops, it goes to Ramirez, and he just does get DJ at first. Big clutch. Two run double off the bat at Charlie Blackman. Rockies two, Padres one, middle two. The world, not just the sports world, continues to react at the passing of the champ, of the greatest, Muhammad Ali, yesterday at 74. And there are so many memorable images of Muhammad Ali. Memorable lines, not just his uh, poetry when he was in the ring, but many of his quotations on life. His funeral will be Friday in his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. I saw Louisville taking on Ohio State today and flag naturally at half mass there and to honor Ali, who's one of his sons, an adopted son, played, was a walk-on on the baseball team, played there for four years at Louisville just a few years ago. And they had Ali embroidered into all their caps today. Wow. I had a the Sonny Liston picture where Ali had him knocked out in my in my loft for years as a as a player in, with the Rockies. He's on my desk. With the famous Neil Leifer photograph. Yeah, it's a great picture. One, one of the most indelible images of certainly the last half century of the 20th century. And I think you can say and wouldn't get a strong argument against. Here's the 3 2, and it's on the ground sharply. Nice play by DJ. That between 1965 and you know, forward, Muhammad Ali, certainly for about a 20 year period, may have been the most recognizable person in the world. More recognizable in small pockets of the globe than even the President of the United States. Unbelievable. Brett Wallace with one out. On well, the Rockies training room and in the weight room, there's two Muhammad Ali quotes 
that hang. It, but one of my favorite ones was his quote that said, I hated every minute of training, but I said, don't quit, suffer now, and live the rest of your life as a champion. But I didn't like it. Uh, the one he goes, I hated running up the mountain. It wasn't the mountain that got me. It was the pebble in my shoe. Yeah. 2-0 inside, and it's 3-0 quickly on Brett Wallace. At one point in studies done, he was more recognizable than Mickey Mouse, your favorite character. Come on. He, he was more famous than Mickey. That's down wow. the middle, 3-1. Single to center field, one on, one out. Let's check in with Jenny Kavnar. Jenny? Yeah, Drew, you mentioned it. We've seen so many wonderful photos of Muhammad Ali floating on social media, iconic ones, and then ones with the lucky few that got a pose for a picture. Nick Hundley was one of those with his time with the Padres. Muhammad Ali came as a guest in the San Diego clubhouse at spring training. The picture might be blurry, but the memories are very clear and very special for Nick Hundley. Here's what he had to say there's like a handful of people in this world that are larger than life you know and when you uh, you get the chance to, to meet them um, obviously he uh, transcended uh, his generation and you know um, it's one of those cool moments where you know you don't know how many times you're gonna get to meet people like that I think it was neat to hear from Nick Hunley because not many other guys in that clubhouse that play really understand and know the greatness in Muhammad Ali. It's definitely a generational thing. And in talking to Walt Weiss today, he was able to say just full of charisma. That's what always caught his eye when you talked about Muhammad Ali as an athlete who dominated his sport of boxing, but also just transcend sports and then life as an activist as well. So neat to kind of have those conversations uh, with people that grew up actually watching Muhammad Ali Drew. And I know that was probably pretty special, uh, pretty special memories and moments for you as well. Yeah, no question. And I had the a great pleasure uh, of meeting him once and there are very few people where there's really an aura about them that is is a tangible thing and with Muhammad Ali that was the case O2 that's up and away one and two and there's so many things to admire about Muhammad Ali and to me it begins with so many people that deviate from their convictions and, and are wishy-washy with yep. their convictions and Monday they feel one thing and Tuesday they feel another I just missed wow where was that yeah that was never the case where it was was in the strike zone that was never the case with Muhammad Ali yet he embraced everybody and never gave off and he said you know one of the things about that he wanted said about his legacy is that he treated everybody well to deep left field and it's out. Derek Norris puts San Diego back on top. Sixth home run for Norris, 3-2 Padres. Home run number 12 allowed by Chad Bettis. Well, Chad wishes he got that fastball called the pitch before that would have ended Norris's at bat. And falls it up with the curveball that Norris catches it out in front, sped up his bat. And he yanks it right down the left field line. See the ball just spinning right up there, and he's fooled. Caught it on the meaty part of the bat. Ramirez hits it sharply at Nolan. Two outs. That is trying to go with the curveball rather than the slider. Just stayed out over the plate. Norris knew right on contact. Andrew Kashner. This Padre team. Kashner laying down a butt. 
at it first. Padres are swinging the bats well over the last 10 12 ball games. Two run home run, Derek Norris, and the Padres by a run as we go to the third. It'll be Nolan Arenado leading off in the third inning. Rockies fans join in on the conversation tonight and every night. Utilize your favorite social media platform and include the hashtag Toyota Talk and you're in. It's that simple. We'll show some of your Toyota Talk comments throughout the ball game. Well, the Padres made a big move earlier today. First trade, first major trade, I should say. Even though the trade deadline is the end of July, this one coming in the beginning of June. James Shields, who is scheduled to start tomorrow, the ace of this Padre staff, especially with Tyson Ross on the DL, was traded to the White Sox for Eric Johnson, who's been more of a journeyman pitcher, and a 17-year-old kid, Fernando Tatis Jr. Most people remember Fernando Tatis, dad when he played. And that was consummated earlier this afternoon. So James Shields, who was proudly signed a year and a half ago by these Padres and you know he was okay last year solid but you know the Padres underachieved the Padres were hoping to you know, be a 90 plus win team they went 74 and 88 and now they're dismantling a lot of what they did famously in the offseason of last year well they went from being the 25th ranked team in payroll in 2014 to being in the top 20 and then this year obviously after last year's results they got rid of Craig Kimbrell they didn't allow Justin Upton to resign they let him walk they got a free they got a compensation pick and now with James Shields and you gotta remember the Padres when they signed James Shields they had to give up one of their first round picks to get him. it was the 13th pick in the draft that year it was, it was a costly sign as you look at Andy Green. Uh, and, the, and the Padres are going to end up picking up about half of the contract. And reportedly, if these reports are accurate, they're going to pay 26 of the remaining 30, uh, 56 million. So 26 million also went to the White Sox, which means they'll still eat 30 million of it. And a strikeout of Nolan on a slider. Two strikeouts for Cashner. The Padres, their record is not good. Runs per game near the bottom third of the National League. Team ERA. You never think of the Padres struggling with ERA. You think of them struggling a lot of times offensively. Their reliever ERA has been just awful. And they've not been a good defensive team. One out. Cargo at the plate. He walked his first time. And you've been hearing the rumblings of 
James Shield being traded to Chicago. The White Sox were rumored to be grabbing him over 10 days ago. The White, White Sox have a pretty nice team. Top of their rotation with Chris Sale. And Shields will go there and will really pitch out of the middle of the rotation as opposed to the top. Quintana they actually have a former Padre and Matt Latos there. I don't know if he'll stay in the rotation. Quintana is very good. Quintana is great. You can argue that Chris Sale and Jose Quintana is probably one of the best one-two punches in baseball. Yep. Shields a career record of 129-104. He is right now on pace for his 11th straight 200-plus inning season. It's really remarkable. And his strikeouts per inning pitch down. Cargo lines this foul. Last start, he went two and two thirds, gave up 10 runs on eight hits. Yeah, that's not a good start. Cargo whips the bat through and fouls that off. Well, well, Ron Fowler, who's the executive chairman, one of the owners of the Padres, he got a, a lot of national attention because he was doing a radio interview and he said it's been embarrassing. I don't know how else to put it. And he said to have a starter like Shields perform as poorly as he did yesterday, it's, a, it's an embarrassment to the team, an embarrassment to him. Now, it sounds really harsh in print. He was, I guess, answering questions. You listen to the interview answering the questions you know in a candid fashion and, and it wasn't directed necessarily at, at Shields no I listened to it and I didn't th I didn't find I didn't find it like he was being vindictive I didn't think he was coming after James Shields I didn't think he was coming out of after anybody specifically he seemed like he was just being candid I'm just giving you my I'm expressing my feelings exactly how I felt He's frustrated, I think, as a group. When you watch this Padres team, it's a pretty, uh, they haven't been patient with what they've built. So you have a guy that is frustrated because he feels like he's put a lot into this team and it was not getting the results he wanted. Yeah, and yeah, from an owner's perspective, you understand that. 2-2. Two -two. It wasn't Steinbrenner-esque, No, no, no. He wasn't, and that's when I looked at it. I mean, I, I looked at a frustrated executive that had a deal on the table with the Chicago White Sox a couple days ago. And it probably felt like Shields blew it. In hindsight, he didn't. He still got the deal done. Cargo battling away against... Andrew Kashner. Three and two, a story on deck. And another walk. Good at bat. That's Cargo. a tremendous at bat. Well, A.J. Preller met the media today after the trade, and he was asked, was the trade in reaction to what Ron Fowler had said in that radio interview? You know the comments, you know, stemming from from the game the other day in Seattle. You know, it didn't really factor into my, into my calculus and, and into the decision. I think it was more of a situation that, you know, we looked at our club and our team, and we, we you know, we thought, you know, this is a chance to gain a little bit of flexibility, move, uh, you know, move move a piece there that we could then add, you know, a young starting pitcher, a young position player that we're really excited about, and you know, continue building in the, you know, a little different direction. Well, A.J. Preller rose to prominence as a first-time general manager very quickly with all of the moves that he made more than a year ago. And, and I think it's just a reminder, not just to, to A.J. Preller, who you know, tried to be creative in what he did. This ball is top to Wallace, and I don't know if he got an out. No, he didn't. That was awkward. And the Rockies now have two men on with one out because of that 
awkward play by Wallace. May have been better off in the communication with Ramirez, letting Alexi Ramirez take that. Alexi was playing in the gap. He was in that six and a half hole over there, and the ball's going right to him. Brett Wall is trying to range and go grab it. You can see the tough time he has in the exchange and trying to get the ball out. And on the Subaru Supermo, watch him struggle trying to get the ball out. Backhanded flip, about 30 feet. And they're going to give an infield hit to Story. Take it. And that'll bring up Para. But to me, it's just a reminder that I don't care if you are the Dodgers who have more money than anybody in baseball, the Yankees, the Giants, or your mid market teams. You can occasionally go the free agent route. But if you're going to build your team entirely through free agency or in large measure through free agency, it ain't going to work. You have to draft, develop, sign in Latin America. I, and, and it's not just the mid market teams, it is the, the teams with the big payrolls. Now, the teams with the big payrolls and, 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 and large banks have the ability to, you know, when they make a mistake, to, to wipe it sure. out, so to speak or to absorb it is a better way to put it easier than other teams but you still have to you have to develop oh two fouled off by par well and if you're a mid-level market team and you go out and you make moves like a james shields or even the trades that they made for a matt kemp a melvin upton jr that's those are very top heavy contracts for this padres organization those players need to perform well, what happens is if it doesn't work, like it didn't work here in San Diego, it may take years to recover. Right. Or well, giving up a first round talent. This ball is hit hard. Solarte comes up with it and they turn it over. Wow. Great that is a tremendous play by Solarte to start a 4 6 3 double play that ends the inning and the threat from the Rockies. Middle of three, San Diego three, Colorado two. The Padres bit a couple of home runs in the game. A solo shot in the first from Will Myers. A two-run home run on a breaking ball by Derek Norris in the second. They're up on Chad Bettis and the Rockies, 3-2. to two. Top of the order in the third for San Diego. Here's the Miami product, John Jay, a three-time All-American for the Hurricanes. And ball one on John Jay. Jay hit a ground ball to Mark Reynolds in the first inning. 
Jay's hitting 345 this year at Petco Park. In fact, just 252 out on the road. He has probably been their most valuable player. He really has, and he really is undervalued if you look at him compared to other center fielders and leadoff hitters. An excellent, excellent defensive center fielder. Cutters in. Two and one. Balls and a strike. At the end of the bat foul. Jay continues to swing a hot bat. And that'll bring up Will Myers. So Billy, we have a question for you from one of our fans uh, on Toyota Talk. Who is the toughest pitcher you ever faced? Colin. It's pretty simple. It's some guy that's pitching tonight <laughs> against the Atlanta Braves. And I truly believe at some point there will be an award named after him. His name's Clayton Kershaw. Like the runner-up to the, the, you win the Kershaw award, and then if you're number two, you win the Cy Young award. Is that how that works? Is that what you're suggesting? I don't know. They'll they'll invent an award for him. He'll have the lowest whipped in history type award. Like, you know, we, hey, we this had, is your whip award. We had this conversation at dinner tonight. Clayton Kershaw retires tomorrow. Is he a Hall of Famer? Yes. And I, I think you're right. He's a Hall of Famer because, to me. Hall of Famers, the best players of your era. Well, we've seen other guys who you know, had dominance in a short period. The late Kirby Puckett comes to mind yeah. in the Hall of Fame. And if you would look and you say, okay, for the eight years he was the big leagues, he was the best probably five or six of those eight years. We're not suggesting he's going to retire tomorrow. He's still going strong. His ERA has declined every single season since his arrival. That's flicked to left field, and now it's first and second, nobody out, with Matt Kemp coming up. What are you seeing from Chad Bettis? Because he's getting barreled again tonight. He is getting barreled. I just see him. He's not able to put the hitters away. He had Will Myers 0-2 right there and misses inside. Will Myers must see the ball very well against Chad Bettis. First at bat of the game, he was one for, he had him one and two. He fought off the slider. It's not an awful pitch, it's is not it, a bad, No, it's not a bad pitch at all. I just think sometimes certain players see certain pitchers very well. And I think watching Will Myers, he looks very comfortable at the plate. Well, Matt Kemp is generally very, very comfortable when facing the Rockies. He has 16 ribbies in seven games against the Rockies, which is a continuation of what he's done throughout his career, whether it's in a Padre uniform or a Dodger uniform against Colorado. Bettis did get him the first time. And that's a base hit to left. And around third, John Jay coming home. He'll score, chance to get a runner at third, yes. Good read by Arenado, and Story getting over to third. That's his responsibility as a shortstop on a base hit to left. So Matt Kemp now with another RBI against the Rockies, 17. And it's a 4-2 to two game. Well, Kemp jumps all over a pitch right there, and Corretto Parra sprinting, making sure he hits the cutoff man. Not a good read by Will Myers, even though it was close. Try not to ever make the first out at third base. And Nolan with just an unbelievable read. Trevor Story being where he needed to be. Now you're still one pitch away from turning it over, getting out of this inning. And it was close.
No challenge from Andy Green, and that fastball's in. It's one ball, one strike on Solarte. He struck out swinging his first time. So now Camp has 140 RBIs and 155 games against the Rockies. That's crazy. One and two. Guy is not a big name, but he's a pretty good player. Solarte. Played with him in the minor leagues in 2012. Did you really? Yep. We were together in Round Rock. Maybe with Texas, huh? Mm -hmm. The Rockies turn this. There's one and there's two. So the Rockies turn it over. It's four, five. Three on that turn. Another run for the Padres. They scored in every inning. Those players to meet Muhammad Ali in the All-Star Game in 2016 will be right here at Petco Park. Thanks, Mark. Here's Mark Reynolds at the plate in the fourth inning. The Rockies trailing four to two. They've been out hit six to four. High fly ball, deep center field. Jay to the walls, going to leap, not going to catch it. Home run, Mark Reynolds. Haven't seen that in a while. Mark Reynolds first home run since April the 27th. He's been getting a lot of hits in between. Just no big flies and it's back to a one run game. The well, Rockies really needed something to get him going and. You don't want to count on the home run especially at Petco Park but every now and then Mark Reynolds will pull out the old whooping stick. Got the pitch out over the middle he knew it right on contact. That's how strong he is because there aren't many guys that could drop their head and just start jogging when they hit it to dead center. Not at Petco Park. I feel like no ball you hit at Petco Park is a gimme. Well, Reynolds all over a fastball right over the middle part of the plate. 
See the hips got cleared. The barrel followed it. Mark has far more hits to center and right this year than on the pull side. Oh, one. This ball's lathered to left center field by Nick Hundley. And Hundley will cruise into second with a double. But Nick's got a couple hits tonight in his return to San Diego. And you like to see that production coming out of your seven and eight hole hitters. Reynolds two for two, Nick Hundley two for two. He got four hits from seven and eight tonight. And that's the length you want to see from top to bottom. That's just a cement mixer slider right out over the middle of the plate again. The Rockies are doing their best to make sure they're staying big part of the field. There's a bunt put down. Will Myers throws it to third and gets Hundley. When you're trying to sacrifice bunt with the runner at second base, your, your job is to try to get the bunt down to third base. Will Myers crashing, the bunt's on the wrong side of the field. That's an easy catch and throw for Will Myers to. That's a, that's a fundamental. It, you know, Chad didn't get the bunt down his first time up, and then it looked like that's where he was trying to bunt it to, the right side, which you, you know you got to go to third base whenever there's, you're trying to move a runner to third. You get it on the left side. If the runner's on first, you bunt to first. If the runner's on second, you bunt to third. At every level. So the Rockies lose a runner in scoring position. Now the trade-off is you have Bettis, a pitcher at first base. Charlie drove in two in his last at bat with a double. You know, when, when you look at games, especially road games, say home games also because the Rockies play poorly at home those little things I know you're not going to be perfect this no, game is a game no, of it's imperfect a, it's a difficult game but you had momentum going with the home run and then the double Charlie Blackman's one of the better hitters in baseball against fastballs. Is 376 batting average against against the pitch ranks him seventh. Only Daniel Murphy. Think about this, Drew. Daniel Murphy's hit 450 this season against fastballs. Daniel Murphy had an 0 for the other day. Slipped under 400 in the 380s. Send him down. Two balls, two strikes on Charlie. Bettis at first. And this ball's lined to Upton and he'll make the catch. And I know what you're thinking. If you execute That's a with run. the bun, it's a run and it's a tying run. Bring your group to Coors Field and receive discounted pricing, scoreboard recognition, and other benefits. Call today for more information. LeMahieu has twice grounded the ball to short. DJ fourth in the National League amongst, or in Major League Baseball among Second baseman and hitting. Two strikes.
got four or five big time college programs it's inside representing the Rockies starting the lineup tonight DJ and LSU Charlie Blackman and Georgia Tech Mark Reynolds University of Virginia defending national champs Nick Huntley University of Arizona Chad Bettis Texas Tech and Ryan Spielborg's UCSB this ball is again hit to short, and oh. it just eats up Ramirez. He really awkwardly went after that. His footwork, and he's a good fielder. His footwork looked like his, his legs were tied together by one of those giant workout rubber bands. Watch <laughs> this. Well, he's reading hops, and that's a hop that just ate him up. Short stops are taut. You're trying to make sure you give yourself a nice hop. A lot of times you'll see the shortstop running in on that one to make sure he doesn't get that in between hop by backing up. He backs up, gets the in between hop, and it eats him up. See if Nolan can make the Padres pay. Waves at a slider at 0 and 1. Nolan his last dozen games hitting below 200. A robust 327 average with runners in scoring position. Leading the league with 44 RBIs. Get your hits when they count. Nolan's 17 home runs began the day tied for the major league lead. First and nationally, but Mark Trumbo went deep for Baltimore again, so he's got 18. Trumbo's like in Camden Yards, huh? Wow, the ball he hit tonight was far. Camden Yards is a pretty small bar ballpark. The Rockies will play at Camden Yards later this summer. In the air, foul down the right field line and out of play. Todd Frazier in his new uniform on the south side of Chicago has 17 home runs as well. And this is playable on the right side. Myers has got it. And the Rockies will leave two on. They do get a run. Mark Reynolds with career home run number 240. And it's a one run game, 4 3, San Diego.
Colorado Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Petco Park, the Rockies trailing four to three as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. With Ryan Spielborg and Jenny Kavnar, I'm Drew Goodman. Melvin Upton Jr. having a solid year for the Padres. Hits it sharply to Story. Story gets his man. Boy, is he athletic. And you get a feel for just how fast that infield is on that ground ball in particular. Exactly. Well, first step quickness for Trevor Story, so important. He takes a great angle to this baseball, unlike Alexi Ramirez last inning. Melvin Upton, first pitch swing. That ball's hit hard. Taking the angle out towards the outfield. He's able to range. Spin, set his feet somewhat, and make a good, strong, accurate throw for Mark Reynolds to pick it up. And Upton against the, the Rockies the last nine games has been tormenting him. 11 for 29. It's yeah, good. He, he's, he's rediscovered his swing this year. He's hitting a few home runs. His batting average is far more competitive than certainly what it was in Atlanta. Here's Wallace. He takes a strike. You know, it's so important. Not only for for a middle infielder to have the range that Story has, but it's one of the things what I'm about to mention that that has hurt Troy Tulowitzki the last couple of years with the chronic issues in the quad area and the hip flexor area. It wasn't just the ability to get in the neighborhood of the ball, but you have to have the flexibility to bend yes. and, and get work ground up, and that is exactly what Story was able to do. Yeah, he got in the neighborhood, but he's able to to pick it where other guys may get in the neighborhood, but they don't have the flexibility anymore to get down to, to that get, ball. Yeah, exactly. You have to be able to get down, and all great infielders have flexible hips. They're able to bend down. They're able to put themselves in a position to see the baseball. Best curveball of the night from Bettis. It really two. was. And Chad, here comes the... Uh, Stating the obvious, he needs a shutdown in or inning. He needs a, a couple of them. Padres have scored in every frame. Another good yacker. And they're two outs. Third strikeout for Bettis. Well, Bettis was making sure he's getting on top of the baseball. You can see the fingers getting on top of the ball, yanking down to make sure he gets that good downward action. Those are the mechanics he wants. Those are the mechanics where he's nice and slow. He's getting on top of the baseball. He's allowing his hand to pull it straight down. Get the good action he, on the curveball. He's getting good action with his with his fastball again. Just off the plate. It's 1-0 on Derek Norris. Trevor Story last night became a guy that will find his name in not a prominent section of the record book, but... That's a base hit for Norris. It's the 23rd time in Rockies history last night that Colorado's starting shortstop played eight plus innings and did not have a chance. These shortstops, they're going to be involved more than anybody else typically. And Trevor did not have a chance last night. It's happened only 22 other times in Rockies history. Yeah, they are unstoppable on the left side. That's his. That's as airtight a left side as you will see. Let's get another graphic for you on just how good that infield is overall. It, it spreads to the right side also. So it's not only being able to put away outs. Look at their range. Nolan first tied for first in baseball in chances, which means he's getting to more balls than anybody else story second most in terms of chances in the National League at shortstop and DJ leading all second baseman in chances and Mark Reynolds not on that graphic not featured on that graphic but Mark Reynolds has done a very fine job at first base and I know we talked earlier at Spilly about fact that the Rockies defense has been not what they're capable of not what their expectations are the last 10 12 days but part of the problem to 
throw the pitching staff. Well, that's another base hit. Ramirez. Good job by Para. Part of, part of the issue has been the pitchers and the number of errors they've made. Tied for first in all of baseball in errors. Well, good job by Gerardo Para. That ball very easily, because he might have overran it, got to the wall. And talk about flexibility with Trevor Story being able to bend down. Gerardo Para with a little flexibility showing his hands. And Gerardo, every day during batting practice, goes out in the outfield and uses a very small glove. It's tiny. Think of like a kid's t-ball mitt. And he uses it to make sure he gets his hands down on the baseball. Kind of what we were talking about. Make sure you bet. Kashner with two on and two outs. Tried to bunt his way on last time. Was thrown out by Bettis. So Bettis got the first two. The fine play by Story to get up. Then he struck out Wallace on a good curveball. But then sharp singles by Norris and Ramirez. And Alexi Ramirez now has a seven-game hitting streak. Eight hits in three and two thirds for San Diego. Good sinker 0 and 2. It's blocked by Hunley. Even that curveball, even though it was 58 feet, Nick Hundley pointed to Chad saying that's a good pitch. And it was good because he's spiking it and he's making sure he's mechanically he's pulling down. We like it when Chad misses down. He has good action with his pitches when he's down in the zone. He's always thrown the ball well against the Padres, including earlier this year. He misses with a curveball, and it's three and two on Kashner. The runners will be off. Chad 2 0 oh with a 182 lifetime average against San Diego. You don't want any part of John Jay in this inning. Now, and Kashner knows the fastball's coming. Chad with two outs and runners in scoring position. Hitters are hitting 360. It's one of those situations where you have to improve upon that. But again, it's small sample size. I get it. Ball four and Bettis. He did this against Dan Straley in Boston. Walked him and paid for it. And he just walked Andrew Kashner to load the bases for the hottest San Diego Padre, John Jay. All of this, or I said Straley from the Red Sox, Straley from the Reds, I should have said. All of this with two outs. And now De La Rosa is going to have to get a baseball and start throwing. Come to the ballpark early Sunday, June the 12th, and take photos with your favorite Rocky players and coaches. Gates A and D open at 11 a.m. There's cargo. John Jay, one for two. He had a sharp single last inning, and we come around to score. He has 11 hits in the last four games. He has a four hit game, a five hit game. He began last night with a base hit. He's 40 in his career with the bases loaded. Hard ground ball right at Reynolds. And that'll end the inning. So the. Padres leave them loaded, and it's 
It's a one-run game as we go to the fifth. Cargo will lead it off. A four to three lead as we head to the top of the fifth. Carlos Gonzalez will lead things off for the Rockies as they try and get some offense going. He had a scheduled day off yesterday. So far today, two walks for him. But what Cargo's been doing in the last calendar year is absolutely ridiculous. You take a look from June second of 2015 when he got on a tear last season till June second this year, the last game he played in before tonight. 47 home runs. That is first in the National League. His slugging percentage, also first. His Hits rank fourth, as do his RBIs, and Walt Weiss knows he has something special. He's supremely talented, and when he gets rolling and he gets in that zone, uh, there's few that are like him. You know, um, all you know, tools across the board, and, and uh, just a very gifted player. And when he when he's rolling, it's, it's pretty special. It's very special and it's also contagious. What we saw in that graphic is his 47 home runs are first. Guess who's second? Nolan Arenado with 46. His hits are tied for fourth with 178. Also tied with him, Charlie Blackman. So it shows this offense, this lineup, has that power and that potential. But again, when car goes hot, we've said it a million times and we'll say it again. There's no better swing in the game of baseball than to watch Carlos Gonzalez, guys. No, I'd love to see that uh, swing here on display. He has walked twice, had a great at bat. I think it was a 10 or 11 pitch at bat, entering a walk his second time up, and that fastball is a called strike, so it's 0-1. Four three San Diego top of five. When you're going well, Spilly, then you find that you, you identified pitches just a smidgen sooner. Well, you're so fine with trying to look for what you want. You can see how the Padres shift on cargo. This is back up the middle, slowed down. That's going to be a hit for Carlos. That's his 11th infield hit this year and if it's not slowed down it's going to go up the middle so a leadoff knock for Gonzalez here in the fifth inning you can see the leg kick and you can see the pace in it, it there's a little pause in it see the pause it allows him to see the baseball a lot better and when you're seeing the baseball you can start picking out what you want you're not guessing I'm not guessing fastball I'm not trying to catch up to 96 I'm recognizing what I want and I'm putting good swings on it only Oledmus Diaz and Starling Marte with more infield hits than Cargo. Harrison and Segura. Fastballs down low to Trevor Story. Trevor had an infield hit in the third. He's one for two. Rockies held to a season low two hits last night. They have seven tonight against Kashner. But they trail four to three here in the fifth. Well, even though the Rockies are not doing well in stealing bases this year, 
situation with Andrew Kashner slow to the plate. Derek Norris, not the greatest throwing catchers. And Carlos Gonzalez at first, you might see a stolen base. And just to put in perspective how bad the Rockies have been. 19 stolen bases, 19 caught stealings. That's the worst percentage in baseball. In fact, I will tell you that only four times has a team in the last 30 years finished with a 50% stolen base rate or worse. And the Rockies right now, as Billy mentioned, just 19 to 38. Cargos really does not look to run anymore. He's attempted one stolen base unsuccessfully this year. I talked to him about it earlier. And his rationale, you know, he's dealt with some injuries the last couple of years. You know the, the knee and what he's gone through there. When you can hit 40 home runs and drive in 100, do you want to risk the wear and tear on your body or potential injury in trying to swipe a base? And the reward, the risk reward, it doesn't make sense for a guy with his kind of power. And a strike three, story new. One out. That'll bring up Para. UC Health is tracking the number of walks in the distance the Rockies earned throughout the season. Start tracking your own steps today to get fit. So far this season, the Rockies have walked 160 times, which totals 1,400 and 14,400 feet. And it's starting to pay off for some members of our crew. Doug Marino out walking every day. Went with Charlie Felix today, our chief photographer. They walk like 30 miles. Actually, would they? I know Charlie walked 11 miles, Doug. Did you go the whole way with Charlie? Oh, Mike Fox went today, too, our director. They went about three miles. Good for you guys. Spilly walked out of his uh, rental house up at Dana Point and got his. I walked two feet. Put toes from the, from the patio to the sand. It was like a Zach Brown song. Yeah. With toes in the, uh, yeah, in the water. I wasn't having beverages this morning. <laughs> But you wanted to. Sure. Which, yeah, and I understand. 2 0 on Gerardo. Two and one. And that is gloved by Ramirez. Turned into a double play. Wow, that's two Unbelievable. Off. That's twice that Para has been robbed of hits. And they turn into double plays. Once by Solarte, this time by Ramirez. You may not see a better defensive play tonight in baseball. No, you're not. That is as good of a play as it comes. Like Jerry Coleman says, he can hang a star on that one. Nice play.
Bettis tonight. And they have played outstanding defense up the middle. Will Myers is two for two. He has a home run and a single. It's Myers, Kemp, and Solarte, two, three, and four. And that ball is lined to the left field corner. And this will be a double for Myers. And now he's a triple away from a cycle. And the pattern continues. There's no other way to describe it, but he sees Chad the ball. Bettis is, is getting hit very hard tonight. The Coors Light Cold Hard Facts are brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. Single season ribbies versus any opponent. Matt Kemp's now driven in 17 runs against the Rockies in eight games. There are 11 more between these two clubs. The most ever by a uh, player against the Rockies, Phil Nevin of these Padres drove in 29 in 2001. The most ever by one guy against a single opponent. How about this? The great Hank Greenberg, the Hall of Famer, drove in 43 against the St. Louis Browns in 1937. 43! That's unbelievable. And I was joking, it's probably against four different pitchers. Matt Kemp, an RBI single in the third. Chad Qualls in the Rockies pen. That looked like a swing to me. I guess not. I don't know anything. Jordan Baker had Toby Bassner weigh in, and Bassner said no swing. What'd you have, Spilly? Did you have swing? I had swing. So you don't know much, but near do I. And a good curveball from Chad. Well, third time through the lineup. Hitters are hitting 342 against Chad Bettis. We've seen him, seen him a couple times in. Mentioned earlier with Will Myers, he must see the baseball very well against Chad Bettis. Certain guys, you have your your kryptonite. And fastball was belt high, fouled off by Kent. Kemp with 140 ribbies in just 155 games, which is really amazing. We were discussing it when he drove in the run his last at bat. Bonds, the all-time mark, 141. That's amazing, but we're talking about 25 more games. Inside. Two and two. Set up for that curveball, but you better get it down. Yeah, and Matt Kemp's probably looking for it. So I, this is a time where if he can elevate a fastball, Matt Kemp has been known to chase high fastballs. And that fastball is going to induce it out. That's just a bad base wow. running play by Will Myers. That's two Cro of them. Crossing over on a on a hard hit ball in front of you is an absolute no no. And heads up play by Story. 6-5 to produce that out. Thank you, Will Myers. That's the second time today he's been thrown out at third base. One time with Gerardo Parra making a great relay throw, and Trevor Story says, what are you doing? Thank you. Yeah, we were just talking about Cargo no longer swiping bases. Matt Kemp, when he came up with the Dodgers, Matt Kemp would run. Matt Kemp was close to 40-40 one year. Here he came second place. I believe it was second place to Ryan Braun for the MVP. The Bison. Solarte at the plate. Kemp has not attempted a stolen base this year. And, and the same philosophy would reign for Matt Kemp. You know, guy who hits the ball over the wall further on in his career, it's just not worth the risk. Well, and the values of of stealing a base, especially if nobody out, it doesn't make a big difference. And I want to put it to you this way: if you get on base one out with on first with nobody out, 
you already have a 44% chance to score. You steal second base, it jumps up 20%. So you got a 67% chance, really, to score from second base. But if you get thrown out, stealing second, the chance of you scoring now with nobody out drops down to 19%. So the percentages for stealing and getting tossed out far outweigh the chances of just getting up to the next base. However, if you are a guy that steals, say, an 80% clip, sure. So you have to factor that in. So I was hoping you were going to lead me to this one because out of the 2,400 stolen bases, and we're using 2013 just, just for sake of the argument, only 23% of those stolen bases came around to score as the only run scored in the inning, meaning a single scored him from second base. Well, so maybe it led to a bigger inning. The point is, is that even though you steal second, you're really not getting that much of an advantage, and you're not scoring that many runs, and the risk of getting tossed out is not worth it. I, th I, I still think that if you are, and you look at the Rockies' makeup, if you are an athletic team that has the ability to put pressure on a battery because of the threat in certain spots for a stolen base, especially out on the road, especially playing in the NL West in pitcher-friendly ballparks, that it's a nice weapon to have. It is a nice weapon to have, but if you get thrown out at 50%, it's not a weapon to use. Right now, it's not. You're no. right, but that's that's a terrible percentage. It is terrible, and you're right. If you're even at 80%, and you're on the road and you're only getting a couple guys on per game it, the risk of getting one of those guys tossed out if you're now if you have base runner after base runner you're leading off every single inning then i might side with you but if you're getting lead off runner on twice a night not worth it solarte is 0 for 2 One out, Matt Kemp at first. Upped it on deck. And DJ can't dive and stop that one. It's a base hit. Yeah, you see the speed of that infield. It's like concrete. Don't miss the action when the New York Yankees are making a rare appearance at Coors Field on June the 14th and 15th. Get your tickets today. Ten hits allowed by Bettis. And that brings Upton to the plate. A difficult man to double up. Chad with the ten hits allowed tonight. That is a season high. He allowed 25 hits in his last three ball games. And five home runs. Upton in the American League performed well enough during that $75 million deal from the Atlanta Braves. But for the most part, Melvin Upton's never been a high average guy. That's on the ground, so the throw to first is not going to get the double play as Reynolds was pulled off a little bit. They do get Kemp at third. So it's a force out at third. Five unassisted. And then Brett Wallace will come up with two outs. Well, Melvin pulling the ball. Another first pitch swinging. Nolan thinking that Melvin was running hard. He was not running his full speed down first baseline. Tried to get rid of the ball quickly. Gets that errant throw. I remember the first time I saw Melvin Upton, he was BJ. First time I saw him at 19 years old in low A. And BJ is short for Boss Man Jr. His dad was Boss Man. So the BJ was a reference for being a little, little Boss Man. Now he's back to being Melvin. It's original name. Older brother of Justin. 
Brett Wallace a single and a strikeout. But I was saying with the with Melvin he hit 255 in his American League career and he hit home runs he'd steal a lot of bases. And so when you look at his average right now in the 250 range that's kind of what he was doing in the American League. This is a broken bat roller grab by Bettis and that'll get the Rockies off the field in the fifth inning. So Bettis has dealt with a lot of traffic but he's gotten through the last two unscathed. It's a one run game going to the sixth. Outside Spilly's Villa here in Southern California, <laughs> as the sun sets and Spilly's yacht rides by, and Spilly's my bird fleet of birds go by. It's Spilly's world, and we're all guests. That's not mine. Yeah, not allowed to go. These rocks are beautiful. They are nice. They're my rocks. Your rocks. Mark Reynolds will lead off in a 4-3 game in the top of the sixth. We need our rocks. And Ted Leitner, the next door neighbor with mighty 1090. He's got his boys. We got our rocks. The Colorado Rocks to bust out here against Kashner. Reynolds had a good night. Double and a run scored and a home run to center field. And the slider touches the inside corner. It's 0 and 1. Just nice when you can drop the bat and oh. just start jogging on a ball to center field. Next pitch will be number 100 for Andrew Kashner. And a guy who just returned to the big leagues today is up in the Padres bullpen, Kevin Quackenbush. Andy Green has not announced who will start tomorrow. Again, it was supposed to be James Shields. Earlier today, he was traded to the Chicago White Sox. And he said, I can't tell you who it is yet because it depends on how tonight's game plays out he said it will be somebody out of our current bullpen but you know had he had to go to the bullpen early that could have changed some things but it looks like it will be a bullpen day tomorrow really tomorrow night when the Rockies and Padres conclude this three game series hand is up on the left side quack and Bush on the right side. And the two twos popped up right side. Will Myers. Nick Hundley will come up with one out. The day after every Rockies win, get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. Use the promo code ROCKSWIN at PapaJohns.com. Uh, Kashner's had 102 pitches now, and you can see Andy Green was paying close attention to how many pitches. He has been throwing 108 season high for Andrew Kashner, and that was against the Rockies earlier this season. Only a single and a double tonight. 
Got a hanging slider his last time, and this ball is going to go to Ramirez deep in the hole, and good throw on one hop. Hunley retired. Ramirez made a couple of sparking, sparkling plays tonight. What makes this play is watch that foot plant. If he doesn't get that foot to plant, the right foot, he has no chance of making the good throw. It's a great play. He anchors his feet down, and he's able to throw the ball on, on line. If that ball would have carried him more into the outfield. He would have had to probably do a jump throw or just eat it. Christian Adamas is going to pinch hit here for Bettis. Means Chad Qualls will be in the game next inning. <laughs> huh? Stuffed in a turkey. Well, we got the Mark Reynolds earlier. I was trying to figure out. He was in a dress with champagne and the pearl necklace. It was a spoof of him being Kim Kardashian. Is that what that was? Yeah. These things are playing out like a New York Times crossword puzzle. I haven't gotten any of them. There's a base hit for Adamas. Well, Christian's done a good job. That will allow Charlie Blackman to hit here in the sixth. I'm going to guess that's going to be the end of Cashner's night. He's going to go to hand, you would think, right? You would think. I'm watching. And he slowly creeped to the top step, and now he's going to walk out. Still no signal. You're going to be one of those pep talks. Yeah, he says he's fine. All right, they're going after Charlie. Have you ever, now you were in the outfield, but had you ever heard of a story where the manager went to the mound to check on his pitcher and said, how you doing? And a, and a pitcher said, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Got nothing left. Tank's empty. Here you go, Skip. Tommy Lasorda has some great stories about going out and talking to pitchers at, at the mound. They're hard to repeat on air, but they are unbelievable. He, he has one where he talks and he says to the pitcher, whatever you do, if if you don't get this guy out, the sun will not rise tomorrow. <laughs> and he realized that after doing that, and the guy ended up pitching and gave up a hit, base hit, and he said, I scared him too much. But he realized the power of going out there and trying to motivate his players. Well, that one really worked. Well, that's what he said. He was like, that one was a little too much. Blackman a two run double in the second so now he's reached in 30 in a row. Two outs Adamas at first. And Charlie gets hit and now you have Adamas in scoring position and I guarantee Andy Green. <laughs> now what? Is going to come out and that takes any decision away. With DJ LeMayhew coming up. Cashner's upset with himself. He wanted to throw that sinker and try to get it to run in. And he missed location. Ended up hitting two people. Second time Charlie's gotten hit this week. So now it's LeMayhew coming up. We expect to see Quackenbush. We'll tell you about it when we come back. 4-3 San Diego.
Colorado Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. And by the Lodge Casino, pitching up a perfect game for cash every Friday and Saturday. Lodge Casino, your first choice for fun. Back at Petco Park with two outs, the Rockies suddenly have two on. A base hit by the pinch hitter Christian Adamas. And then Blackman was hit. That ended the evening for Cashner. Here's Kevin Quackenbush, who was a mainstay in the bullpen the last couple of years, struggled earlier, got sent out, returned today with the trade of James Shields. And he has the first pitch in there to DJ for a strike. LeMay, he's 0 for 3 officially. He did reach in the fourth inning on an error by Alexi Ramirez. He's hit it on the ground three times at Ramirez. Don't hit it to that guy. Two strikes. And for whatever reason, Amarista. Oh, excuse me, it was a double switch. Let me. I thought we were showing Ramirez. I'm saying, wait a second, Ramirez is still out there. So Amarista comes in the ballgame. In a double switch. One and two. Brett Wallace is out of the game, and Salarte's at third. Side two and two. Well, knowing DJ with his approach, where he normally hits the ball to the right side of the of the of the field, the way center field is set up, John Jay is in right center, so he's trying to hit it up the middle, and that's probably why he ends up hitting it to Alexi Amarista. Now three and two. Well, they're in auto on deck. Times when you're, you're as good of a hitter as DJ LeMayhew, you have the ability to manipulate the ball, and you can see center field is wide open. He's trying to hit the ball straight up the middle. You can see where Will Myers, how far over he's playing on the first base side. Take a look at DJ's spray chart to see why they're playing him the way they play him. Majority of DJ's hits go opposite field. And like I've said before, Andy Green loves maneuvering his position players. He'll move each guy individually. Ball four, and the bases are loaded for Nolan Arenado. Lumay, he was behind 0-2. Good at bat by DJ, and the inning started so innocently. Two quick outs. Christian Adamas coming up, hitting the ball on the ground opposite field. Blackman with the hit by pitch, and now another walk. One of the things Nolan did last night in the aftermath of the, the mini tirade in the dugout in the first inning, he pointed at himself after the game, said, I got to get it going. He takes a strike there. And you know that's how he sees things every single day. You also don't want him to put such enormous pressure on himself that you press. And here's an opportunity for him. Here's the 0-1. Fastball's up. One and one. Well, you try to keep your mind clear. You try to breathe. Take a big breath and just focus on seeing the baseball. And then you add outside pressures makes seeing the ball even harder he made a chase there one and two Nolan and a 1 1 count looking to jump on a quack and bush fastball yeah it chased still get one more strike one of the toughest guys in baseball to get to chase and it's an easy play for Myers as he pokes the curveball at first base. So the Rockies leave him loaded in the sixth. Andrew Kasher and the Padres ahead four to three.
stretch of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile's News and Notes. Corey Seager went off last night against the Braves north of here at Dodger Stadium. Hit three solo home runs. First Dodger rookie since 1959 to do that. Hunter Pence is going to miss a couple of months. He's going to have surgery to repair a tear in his hamstring. And Steven Strasburg has already struck a 1,000 guys in 855 and Incredible. two-thirds innings. The second quickest in big league history to 1,000. Rookie of the Year award winner, Kerry Wood, the only one to go faster. Kerry Wood edged Todd Helton for Rookie of the Year some years back. 4-3 San Diego. Quackenbush on the hill for the Padres and another Q on the hill, Chad Qualls. You get 10 points if you can use his name in Scrabble or use his letters. Well, you, can, you, you can't use names, though, in Scrabble. That's the problem. You can use the Q. Derek Norris hits it on the ground to third. Nolan's got it. One out. I was telling Mark Sweeney, our old friend who, who works on the uh, pre and post game shows for the Padres, does work for FS1, former Rocky. I was telling him today that Nolan has not made an error this year. He has one error that, that was given to him. There's Sweeney. He's working in the broadcast booth tonight as well with Mud and the great Dick Enberg. And I said it, that was on a on a kind of a bad hop throw from the outfield from Cargo, and they had to give the error because the, the trail runner moved up. They had to attribute an error, and so Nolan bought it. Said he's not made an error on a ground ball or a throw this year. He shook his head. He couldn't believe it. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable how good that guy is. This ball is hit in the air to center field. Charlie coming on. And Alexi Ramirez is retired. That will bring up Alexi Amarista. You can see Qualls' numbers, the innings pitch, the whip is pretty high. Doesn't strike out a lot of guys, and all the numbers don't look fantastic. But when he has his sinker moving and he's using his slider, he's very, very effective. Had to eat up two innings last against the Cincinnati Reds. Gave up three hits and had a walk. Fouled off by Alvarista. Who would like to be referred to instead of as a middle infielder, he'd like to be referred to as a pitcher now. Alexi? Yeah. Has he got one out in the game? One out. With traffic. Didn't let Bethancourt get painted up. That's a base hit. 11 hits tonight for San Diego. Good piece of hitting by Alexi Amarista. Looking for a pitch away. That's a sinker off the plate. Not a bad location. But notice the shift. Notice where Nolan's standing. Gets it right past him. John Jay's one for three. Maybe the biggest out Chad Bettis got. And that gets through Nick Hundley. And now Amarista in the scoring position. That'll be a pass ball. Bettis retired. Jay with the bases loaded at two outs in the fourth inning on a ground ball to Mark Reynolds. Bettis goes five innings tonight, four runs, ten hits, a walk, three strikeouts. So well, Chad was able to limit the damage after the early home runs. It still was not that Chad Bettis outing we saw so frequently in April. What's going on? Ooh, right now, Nick, the last two, you'd think Stephen Wright was on the, on the hill. That's two straight pass balls. And on two sinkers, I, I noticed Chad's getting a lot of movement on his sinker at sea level tonight. See, it's just handcuffing Nick Hundley.
2 0 on Jay. That was a foul tip. 2 and 1. John Jay hitting 436 with runners in scoring position. Malik Smith and Stephen Piscotty hitting better. What what is Piscotty doing? 510? Unbelievable. Uh, we saw him in St. Louis and he was taking a great approach. One of Piscotty's old teammates. Part of the reason why John Jay is here. That's a great point. Jet Jerko was traded to St. Louis and John Jay. The player that returned to San Diego opened up the spot for Stephen Piscotty to get a chance to play. Three and two. One of the reasons that trade was made, it seems uneven. Jed Jerko, guy that his rookie year had a really nice rookie year, especially in the power department, but it had dropped off considerably. But John Jay hit just 210 last year. He's found his stroke again. He's over 300. Here's the 3 2. Strike three on the inside corner. Qualls with that hip side sinker to freeze Jay. And Amarista is left at third. Will go to the seventh. It remains 4 3 San Diego. Great pitch by Qualls. Yeah, Diaz has some pop. The shark was rolling, and then uh, St. Louis started throwing out the big flies. Cargo would like to throw out a big fly here. Rockies down by a run. Quackenbush to Cargo leading off the seventh. And a big swing and a miss. 0-1. Cargo tonight is one for one and two walks. Got the average at 3.09. Two strikes. Rockies have Miguel Castro and Jason Mott in their bullpen.
Two balls, two strikes. There's Quackenbush trying to go up again. Watching him so far tonight. You know he's come back from El Paso, and he had good numbers in El Paso. Five innings pitch, nine strikeouts. He's trying to elevate the fastball. He did it to Nolan earlier in his last bat. He's doing it to Cargo right here. And he got him. That fastball right up above the belt looks so enticing. But it is hard to get on top of that pitch. It's probably a ball, but it's so hard to lay off of it. Time for our Colorado Lottery pitch probability with Trevor Story at the plate. It's right handers. 62% of the time he gets fastball first pitch, so he gets curveball, right? That's how it works. Story tonight, an infield hit in the third. He's one for three. Three runs, eight hits for the Rockies. Four runs, 11 hits for San Diego. Rockies just two and five against San Diego this year. And here at Petco, they have lost 20 of their last 26 games. Good eye. The knees two and two. Rockies have not won a series here since early July of 2013. Last eight series at Petco, they've gone 0 6 and 2. They had a period right before that where they were playing really well here. Two two. And once again, Trevor Story got locked up. On a pitch that was clearly in the strike zone. That happened in his previous at bat in the fifth inning. It's all about sequencing with Quack and Bush. Fastballs, curveball, and that's right down that's Broadway. That's right down Broadway. That's center center. You see on the Subaru strike zone. How does that happen? I mean, people at home are saying, yeah, how does he not swing? Because you're that? sitting off speed. That's with what, two strikes? Yeah. That's what he was looking for. He was looking for a curveball. What happened to sit hard and adjust off speed? Well, that's why you have the pitch probability. You have those running through your brain at the same time. You get a scouting report. It'll say, hey, Quackenbush against right-hand batters will throw his curveball at two strikes 45% of the time. So you're like, you know what? I'm going to take my shot. I'm going to guess off speed right here. And if I'm going to trust in my hands, I can foul it off. How often did you sit soft with two strikes? Yeah, rarely. Because you're basically, I mean, Quackenbush has, has, a, has a solid fastball. It's not like you know, he's throwing 82. No, he just blew cargo away with a fastball. Right. So if you do commit to sitting off speed, the chances of you catching up to the fastball if it, if it shows up is remote, right? Well. If you're going to be sitting off speed, you try not to sit off speed on per pitch. I'm just going to sit off speed the entire at bat and wait till I get it. Manny Ramirez was famous for doing it. I remember one of my friends faced him one time. And he threw three straight fastballs right down the middle. And he was like, what happened right there? He said, hey, he's looking for your slider. Next to bat, throws him one slider. It's hit 400 feet. Brackenbush strikes out the side in the seventh. Middle of seven at Petco. It remains 4 3 Padres.
Bettis-Chapman's Chad Bettis, Andrew Kashner, the respective starters. Bettis gave up 10 hits a season high. He did keep the Padres to four runs despite a lot of traffic. And Andrew Kashner is on the plus side. He gave up three runs on eight hits. Kind of a typical Andrew Kashner outing. You, you nick him, but you never really fully blow him up. So it's 4-3 San Diego as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. It's the thick part of the order for Jason Mott against the Padres. It'll be Myers, Kemp, and Solarte. And we welcome you upstairs with Ryan Spielborg's I'm Drew Goodman. The Rockies uh, offense kind of in spurts uh, again tonight, but they're down a run. It's getting late. Yeah, it's getting late, and you need the bullpen to come on and, and make sure you hold the Padres for a little bit longer to see if you can get the ball rolling for the Rockies. It's just been one of those things. We keep watching the Rockies push and push and push, and, and just the other side hasn't been tilting over yet. And you want to get into that Padre bullpen because it has had a very poor year, but... Quackenbush gave him a lift with the, the striking out of the side in a very important part of the Rockies order. So here's Jason Mott on for the fifth time this year. Will Myers, home run, single, double. And he takes strike one. Myers hitting 471 in the early stages of June. One ball, one strike. For how electric Mott was in his first appearance of the year, 96, 97. Product of Iona College in New Rochelle, New York. One ball, two strikes. Myers needs a triple to hit the cycle and after watching the first pitch is take a good solid take took another pitch that was a good solid take he, he looks very comfortable at the box tonight congratulations to Merritt and Amber Lawson That was one of those cargo swings. Remember where Cargo used to lose his bottom hand? You see guys lose their top hand periodically. Cargo, a few years ago, I haven't seen him do it this year, fortunately, because he had all his finger issues, would lose his bottom hand. Watch Myers. He's going to lose his bottom hand here. I think guy could dislocate his shoulder yeah, with he that. he can get hurt. He also chooses not to wear batting gloves. And he's gone. Good pitching by Mott. Got him on a slider at 90. So a strikeout of Myers begins the seventh inning for San Diego. That'll bring up Kemp. Mott with the good snap of the slider. Great location. Just off the plate. Mott known for throwing primarily fastballs, so hitters try to cheat on it. His bottom hand fell off on that check swing as well. Back to back at bats. This is thinking he's probably got to put a little more pine tar. Pine tar on the bat. Cut fastball there for a strike on Kemp. Mentioning the possibility of a cycle with Will, My with Will Myers getting a triple. The only cycle in Padres history produced at Coors Field last year, August the 15th. By the guy who's at the plate, Matt Kemp. And Kemp goes chasing, and it's 0 2. Jason Mott. Boy, is he, is he upset with that pitch? Wow. <laughs> this is the, this is the, I've never seen a reaction this, on an 0-2 pitch like this, like Armageddon. You're all right, Jason. You're still ahead 1-2. 
I don't know if I'd ever really want to golf with them. Yeah, well, that's a bad swing, Spilly. Ninety-seven on that fastball. Oh, we like how he closes his eyes right before he throws his pitch. He's breathing through his eyelids. Is that what he's doing? For Fernando, he'd look up at the sky, roll his eyes, and throw heat by you. On the ground, deep short. Story throws out Kemp, two gone. The Rockies in the eighth inning will have Reynolds, Hundley, and then a pinch hitter. The next Fan Friday is June the 10th, and the first 10,000 fans will receive a Fan Friday team umbrella. Hopefully that's not a precursor for the weather that's going to be there. I hope not. It's turned to June. If it's a mini umbrella, that would be sweet. At the knees for a strike on Solarte. Day. I'm ready for summer. Me too. at the top of the zone. Cutter, slider, Mott continues to. I'm enjoying the this antics is, tonight. Yeah. He's coaching himself up in a demonstrative fashion while he prepares for the next pitch. Come on, Jason. Let's go, little, he's got man. a little PB going tonight. He's going to strike out Solarte and he's going to he's going to go to the dugout disgusted with himself. He's going to destroy a water cooler. This guy to beat up a water cooler in a one two three inning. He's a great guy to visit with. Right, Real outgoing it. personality. Yeah. I enjoy spending time with Mott. Yep. And this is pop foul out of play. Well, as our good buddy George Frazier used to say, most relievers, and he was one of them, are part time human beings. <laughs> <laughs> this one has a World Series ring. Yeah. Close, closer on that St. Louis Cardinals team. So is George Frazier. He's got a World yeah. Series ring. George has a American League Championship ring with the Yankees in 81 and a World Championship ring with the Twins in 87. Mott had five saves in that 2011 postseason. He is all sorts of animated. One two on Solarte and that is line right at para and it's a one two three inning. Let's watch Mott walk off. Is he happy? Is he he's yelling at the ball. He's yelling at the ball. It's rolling back to the mound. <laughs> he doesn't like the gum anymore. <laughs> I love it. <laughs>
there to Chad Qualls. The Rockies still down by one as we head to the top of the eighth. Well, from those strange relievers to another Boone Logan, he's out on a rehab assignment. Here's an update on him. He did appear with Triple A Albuquerque tonight up in Sacramento. One inning pitch, one strikeout. He said if all went well, he was planning on joining the team in Los Angeles. So that's great news for the lefty in Boone Logan. Christian Bergman, he's reported to extended spring training down in Arizona. That's where he's going to continue to rehab. While Weiss said no setbacks for him. He's just rehabbing down there. That left oblique injury. And Adam Adovino, he threw a 25-pitch simulated game yesterday. So he continues to fare well in his uh, progress back from Tommy John surgery. Love those updates on Adam Adovino and really look forward to seeing him. Hopefully very soon, guys. It is the month of June targeting right around uh, end of June or July. So hopefully see him soon. Absolutely. And Mark Reynolds leads off against Brandon Maurer by hitting a towering fly ball to center. Jay's got it one out. Well, Brandon Maurer, if the Rockies are going to produce a rally, this would be uh, a likely candidate because his last three appearances, Spilly, mm -hmm. an inning and a third, Nine runs, eight hits, a 60.75 ERA. A what? 60.75 ERA? Yes. All right. Let's see it. Well, he leads a team with appearances for the Padres. So he should be good for one of these big innings. One out. Here's Nick Hundley. He swung it well tonight. Two for three. Robbed of a hit his last time up on a good play by... Alexi Ramirez going in the hole on the backhand side. Fastball below the knees. Jordan Baker's zone tonight has been a little, a little tight. I think he can look back to one pitch for Chad Bettis. There's a 2-2 fastball in the corner. Led to a home run right after. Good job, Nick Hundley, a three-hit ball game. So the tying run aboard here with one out in the eighth. And the Rockies will send up Ryan Rayburn to pinch hit for Mott. Who wants tacos? Fans follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies score seven plus in a game. So the Rockies number one pinch hitters up there in Rayburn. I would have liked to see Jason Mott hit tonight. Uh, for what reason? Just what kind of antics would he have done on the box? See, Jason Mott, what, when Jenny was giving her report, was was basically going through the same thing to explaining, if you will, to Chad Qualls. And everybody else kind of walked away, but Qualls got it. You know, he understood him. They speak the same language. They speak crazy. Good swing. Yes. One and one. He was super animated and tons of fun. He's still talking. I don't know if anyone's listening, but he's still talking. Here's the 1 1, and that ball's bounce past Stu Cole. Did you see that Eddie Butler standing there? Ellis Burks, nobody turned around. Christian Adamas on the back. Rockies have Miguel Castro, Carlos Estevez in their bullpen, and that's a strikeout. Two gone. That'll bring up Blackman. Well, as a group, the Padres are trying to go up, up the ladder on Rockies hitters. We saw with Quackenbush, and now we see, see with Mauer. Rockies got two in the second on a two-run, two-out double by Charlie. And they added a run in the fourth inning on a leadoff home run by Mark Reynolds. The Mott camp. Just gonna have to lock off the camera to follow Jason around. Green's going to go for another double switch. He wants a left-hander to face Blackman. Be careful what you wish for because Charlie's hitting lefties in a big way. 
Janikowski will go out for, to right field for Matt Kemp. Tell you about the change when we come back. Oh, he's going to bring in Rodney right now. Four out save. Colorado Rockies baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Jack in the Box, it's back. The Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack. Taste it before it's gone at Jack in the Box. Padres leading four to three. The Rockies have Nick Hundley at first with two outs. And for just the second time this year, Andy Green's going to ask Fernando Rodney to get four outs the last time he asked him to do that Fernando Rodney actually took the loss and you say well how can that be he doesn't have an ERA he's got a zip ERA they scored an unearned run off of him otherwise this year he has been unbelievable look at that a 125 batting average against and in 20 innings he has not given up an earned run and you talk about two pitches and as good of a changeup as you're going to see in the major leagues 94 to 98 mile an hour fastball and we'll back it up with the changeup that will fall right off the table. Remind me of some guy named Hoffman. And the fastball's off the plate, ball one. Travis Jankowski again for Matt Kemp. Two and oh. He'll throw the changeup at any time. Looking at the percentages with Francisco Rodney against lefties, it's 50 50. Either get fastball or changeup. And there was the changeup on the 2 0 -oh pitch. Charlie looking to jump on the fastball. He gets a changeup out in front. Good healthy hack. But you know what? I'm fine with that. Look at, yeah, we got to look at that again. He may have been on that. It just had a lot of movement. He may have identified that. It didn't look like, to me, it didn't look like he was out front. Did it to you? Let's watch this again. Yeah, no, he recognizes changeup. He was on it. He just missed it. Three and one on Charlie. Hundley is at first base, and that is ball four. So Nick now to scoring position. LeMahieu coming up.
Well, if you're Hundley at second base, you have to make sure you get a big enough lead, a good secondary lead to be able to score. With two outs, you are getting, you are having to score on any sort of base hit, no matter how hard it's hit. Even with Nolan on deck, you have to take your shot. Rocks tonight. Rocks tonight, two for nine with runners in scoring position. The San Diego Padres, one for six. A lot of opportunities for the Rockies. DJ 0 for three and a walk. Two changeups, and he's out front. All night's been one of those evenings for LeMahieu where he's been behind in every at bat. This is the third or fourth time he's been 0 2. It's not a worse feeling. You walk up to the plate, pitch, pitch, 0 2. Great. Oh, that's, that's a balk. Now the Rockies with a base hit can take the lead, especially with the speed of Blackman at second. He just tripped. He got his spike caught. I've seen this before. If Rodney just throws the baseball and it crosses the plate, it doesn't have to be in the air, on the ground, it would have been considered a pitch and not a bot. Two on, two in scoring position, two outs. 0 and 2 on LeMayhew. He went change up again, 1 and 2. DJ had a great May, hit 341 in May. This could be a tough play, and they get him by a step. Amarista has had a, excuse me, Ramirez has had a very fine game defensively. So the Rockies will leave two in scoring position. We go to the bottom of the eighth for three Padres. on that score for a while. The Rockies have left 11 on as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Here's the sweet center.
Century Link High Speed Challenge. Been asking you all week. Cargo has the hardest hit home run for the Rockies this season. We want to know what the exit velocity was. Three choices. Go to at rootsports underscore rm to cast your vote. Cargo will come up in the top of the ninth inning. Miguel Castro in the bottom of the eighth inning. He'll face Melvin Upton Jr., Travis Jankowski, and Derek Norris trying to keep it a one-run game. Well, and since Miguel was recalled after the shoulder fatigue earlier in the season, he was so great early in the early in the year. He hasn't been quite as effective. Fastball up in the zone. He's been getting touched up a little bit. Need a clean inning out of Castro tonight. Slider misses ball one. Five innings from Chad Bettis tonight. Four runs, ten hits, a walk, three strikeouts. Qualls had a solid inning. Mata one, two, three inning. That was very entertaining to watch. As animated as he was. And now Castro here in the eighth inning, and he falls behind immediately, two and nothing on Upton, who's 0 for three. Upton robbed twice, once by LeMahieu, once by Trevor Story. Oh, that's nowhere near the zone. Every pitch he's thrown, he's looking down as if to to uh, indicate he's uncomfortable with the mound. Rodney last inning would tripped up by the mound or by the crooked hat. I wasn't sure. How about Castro's pitcher throwing with high tops on? Castro is six foot eight. Low tops would look weird on him. Balls hit well to right. Cargo goes back and tucks it away. Fill out your 2016 insurance MLB All-Star Game ballot now at Rockies.com on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Vote up to 35 times at Rockies.com slash vote. Yeah, vote for that guy. He's good. That would be a wise vote. Here's Jankowski, first A.B. Came into the double switch last inning for Matt Kemp. Hit his first home run this week. He has lightning kind of speed. Yes, he does. I asked him last time the Rockies played the Padres. He was one of those 6'4", 6'3-something, 60 guys. That's yeah. fine. And past the diving, Nolan Arenado, and Jankowski will stop after the wide turn as par was quick to the baseball. Balls have snuck past Nolan tonight, just out of his reach. Fastball away. Nolan gives his best effort. Watch Jankowski getting out of the box. He's flying and he's trying to get to second base, but Gerardo Parra making sure, playing shallow, knowing Jankowski probably wasn't going to hit a ball over his head. He was playing down the left field line a bit. Well, now you know Jankowski at some point in this sequence is going to take off. Oh, he's got to. And Castro's high leg kick. Thank you, Derek Norris. He swings at the first pitch. LeMahieu. Two outs. That'll bring up Ramirez. Alexi Ramirez tonight is one for three. He's hurt the Rockies with his glove. He's made several really outstanding plays.
Even that last play with DJ LeMayhew. Ball hits the grass one more time. DJ's safe, and it's a tie ball game. It's a great play by Ramirez to end the inning. Ball one. Well, Ramirez was giving Jankowski a chance to steal second base. That's it. He may give him another pitch, too, with yeah. that first pitch being a ball. He might give him two. Some guys feel comfortable hitting with two strikes. You see the feet moving. He flinched. But didn't go one and one. And now Jankowski pretty much let Ramirez have his at bat now. You're in scoring position if he hits a ball in the gap. He's going to score. He takes off and it's fouled off. Jankowski a few years ago, Cal League and Lake Elsinore had 71 stolen bases. 71 stolen base. I don't care what league you're playing in. That's a whole bunch of bags. That's a lot of bags. And I always laugh when did in 122 games. How many times did he get caught stealing? Once. He, 14 once. times. He's 71 to 72. Now 71 out of 85. Not going. And it's a comebacker. So we will go to the ninth inning in a one-run game. And the Rockies will have the... Big guys up, Nolan Arenado, Carlos Gonzalez, Trevor Story. All to face Fernando Rodney. Nolan's going to lead it off. Nolan 0 for 3 in a walk. Fernando Rodney has already thrown a few pitches as he faced Blackman, walked him, and then induced a ground ball to get out of the inning with DJ LeMayhew. They're asking him for just the second time this year to get a four out save. Andy Green said after the ball game the other day when they coughed up the 10 run lead, which had never happened before in Padre history, he said at least for the short term he may shake a few things up in that bullpen redefine some roles last night we saw it a little bit in Carlos Villanueva in a four nothing game pitching the ninth inning and tonight the minor change was having Fernando Rodney come on with two outs in the eighth inning. And a change up on the inside corner. Actually, that was a fastball. Let me correct that. For a strike. Take a look on the Subaru. Well, that ball does run in, and like I mentioned before, the strikes on tonight's been. And it's over two. A little big. Yep.
There's the 95. That's what makes Rodney so difficult to hit. You have a changeup as good as his. Arm action sells it. Nolan's only faced him twice. He's one for two. Cargo is one for three against him. Story's never faced him. Yeah, you know, James Shields, we talked about it a couple times tonight, was traded earlier today to the White Sox, was scheduled to go tomorrow. We'll learn who out of the bullpen or, or how many out of the bullpen will have to work tomorrow for the Padres. It's going to be a bullpen day for them. Andy Green did say that. But this ball down the line foul. Even though Shields has a great reputation, and deservedly so. A couple of the Rockies big names namely Nolan Arenado and Carlos Gonzalez had robust numbers against him. Very Cargo's hit three home runs career wise against Shields and Nolan owned a 538 average against him with four home runs but it doesn't mean anything now. On the outside corner strike three and 97 with movement. You see on that super strike zone it's right there painted. Good sequence of pitches by Rodney. This is truly amazing number. The Padres are 18 and 0 when leading after the eighth inning, and 62 and 0 since last year. Remember a hitter once many years ago, as the story was told to ask an umpire, he said, "He goes, where was that?" And he said, "Son, it was a Hall of Fame pitch. That was a great pitch. And that right there was." A Hall of Fame type of pitch 97 with the movement back onto the black. Here's Cargo with one out. I don't know if Cargo has taken the whole way or he identified the changeup. Two and oh. Carlos tonight, one for two and two walks. Story on deck after that para. The Rockies can get a base runner. He doesn't miss much. They remade their bullpen this offseason, and Rodney was a rather inexpensive option at closer and he's paid off. Here's the changeup. Two and two. He throw the fastball hard inside the pitch before and then he throw that changeup and look at the depth that he gets from it. And the whole key, Billy, I mean you, you could describe it better than than in me obviously is the arm speed's the same. It's the same. I can't tell. Arm speed's exactly the same, and that's what makes the change of it. That's why I always say, if you if you were to change, give someone the best secondary pitch, what would you teach him? Would it be a slider? No. Would it be a curveball? Nope. Would it be a changeup. It's a devastating pitch, and you can pitch with it without velocity. You don't need to have the high velocity pitches, but if you do, that makes you elite. You got him on a fastball. Two strikeouts in the ninth, and the Rockies are down to their final out. Trevor Story. We've had six strikeouts of the Rockies in the last three innings, and that went right by Cargo. Story tonight, one for four. And that's lined to right. Jankowski gets there, though. And that ends the game. Rodney, a four out save. The final score 4 3, San Diego. Kashner gets the win. He's 3 and 5. Chad Bettis takes the loss. He's 4 and 5. Rodney with his 11th save. And the Rockies fall to 2 and 6 this year.
against San Diego and they've now lost four consecutive games. They dropped seven games beneath 500 to 24 and 31. The Padres are now 23 and 34. Our Jimmy John's delivery of the game provided by Derek Norris early on. He got a curveball with the Rockies ahead two to one and Norris would hit a two run home run to put the Padres in front and they never relinquished the lead again. Derek Norris providing the Jimmy John's delivery of the game. Once again, the final score at Petco Park tonight. The Padres over the Rockies, 4-3. To, to Mark Stout in the studio we go. Mark.